Let's check out an Audi LED water bulb. They were selling these off because I get the feeling that uh, they'd sold as many as they were going to sell and it was just clearing the stock. I was hoping when I originally got this, that is not part of this, but I, I wondered where that had gone. I've obviously packed it amongst other stuff. Excellent, good to find that. But um, I think a lot of people, when they bought it, would be kind of disappointed because the idea is you've got this very large inflatable ball, and yes, I will blow it up. And then, I've not even checked this out, in the bottom of it, how does this go in? But you can push in this little standard. Oh, it just, it, it does, it's sort of got a little recess here that you can just jam it in. Uh, and it's a very typical little waterproof LED light with infrared receiver, the remote control, and it can do red, green, blue, right? Tell you what, I'm going to open this up to take the little battery tab off it. I think there'll be a battery tab. I hope there's a battery tab. And I'm going to inflate this ball. It's going to be huge. And we'll see what it looks like. One moment, please. So here we are outside, and let's try this out. Let's take the exposure off, because it's not going to be super bright, owing to the fact that the camera sensitivity is quite low. I turn it on. It's not actually too bad. It's quite visual, but it's not really going to work in a bright area. But we've got red, green, blue, white. Um, and we've got various oh, psychedelic colour changing options. So it's fairly usable, but the batteries are very low capacity. But let's take a look at the circuit board now and see what surprises it holds. And I can already tell you, it has some surprises. OK, let's explore this little puck's mysteries. For reference, when you've deflated the ball again, it has this fairly large orifice, he said, sticking his finger in the menacing manner that you could put other light sources in, perhaps with a more powerful um, power source to give brighter illumination uh, for longer periods of time. This is using two 203 two twos. Let me zoom down on this. And note that when I turn it on, only two of the three LEDs are lit. There is a reason for that. Let me open this. It incidentally did have the childproof lock in it. Uh, I believe that's Reese's Law because of some kid called Reese who swallowed a battery and died. It's a fairly common thing. If you have kids or you come across a kid that has swallowed a button cell, it doesn't matter if it's a little alkaline cell or one of these, pretty hard to swallow these, uh, that requires medical attention immediately because it causes an electrolytic action that can actually damage the intestines quite significantly and very quickly. So that has to be de dealt with immediately. Uh, the module that comes out of this has a couple of surprises. One of the first surprises, I don't know if you're going to see this, I shall uh, focus up to here and zoom. This LED is, uh, it's upside down. It's not supposed to be up that way. That's why it was not lit. Also, see this fingerprint and flux. There's a diode just splashed on up there. Um, other than that, it's a fairly sensible design. Right, let's go back down. So I was wondering, actually, because it seems to use a fairly standard uh, remote control, will this work with other remote controls? I have one right here next to me. And then I'll uh, take a photo of that and reverse engineer it. Um, so let's just put this back on. So here's the original remote control. On, off, on. Uh, red, green, blue, OK, and the strobe effects and colour changing and soft transitions. Right, tell you what, I'll put it off again. We'll bring in this other remote control, this generic one that has been shipped with another product. And we'll pull a little tab out and we'll see, does it operate it on? I love the way everything is standard. Nothing is operating. Does this thing even have a battery in it? It must have a battery in it. What if I turn it on with this one? And then try some of the other buttons. Nope, they're all different. It's changing colour because it's in the colour change mode before. Uh, let's put it to white, which isn't really white. Nope, nothing actually works on this remote control at all. Excellent, we'll tell you what, I'll just put the tab right back in that then, shall I? Okay. Now that we've ascertained it does not work with these standard looking remote controls, annoying, it means you'll have to take more than one when you want to change the lighting in random shop window displays. 
Uh, now you've asked me that, I shall take the pictures, I'll reverse engineer it, and we'll s explore the circuitry. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. So I shall zoom down a bit in this. The first thing you notice in this circuit board, apart from the fact this LED is upside down, I have since dropped the circuit board and the LED pinged off so the LED can now be sorted on the correct way around. It was just stuck with flux, probably. Uh, but the other main thing to notice is this big fingerprint here from the person who has hand soldered on a Zener diode across the supply rail. That's quite odd. The LEDs have a common positive to the battery connection and then the red, green and blue connections. The green and blue go directly to the microcontroller and the red goes via a 47 ohm resistor because the red LEDs have a lower forward voltage and this uh, limits the current a bit. There is a 100 ohm resistor here going over to this capacitor to provide a decoupled supply for the, the I was going to say pass infrared, it's not, it's just a direct infrared receiver, modulated infrared receiver, which has a fairly high standby current. And the microcontroller has its own little decoupling capacitor as well. Let's take a look at the schematic. Here is the schematic. I shall zoom down just a little tiny bit more. Quiescent current of the circuit was 250 microamps, that's quarter of a milliamp, in standby, peaking up to 500 milliamp, uh, 500 milliamp, 500 microamps, half a milliamp, when the infrared receiver was receiving any data, even if you, the it was effectively turned off and you just pressed a colour, the current would peak up while it was receiving that. So depending on the environment, the batteries won't have a huge length of lifespan. The intensity of the LEDs is partly controlled by the internal impedance of this little chip and this 47 ohm resistor, but also by the impedance of the 2032 cells. Better quality ones can put out higher current, lower quality ones don't. There is that Zener diode, a dub, it's marked WA, which appears to be 6.2 volt. Not sure why that's there, but it is across those cells. They must have felt there was a need to protect against something. Maybe rechargeable cells being put in? Not really sure, and the voltage going so high. But uh, if you put two rechargeable lithium cells in, it would theoretically about 8.4 volts, and that would sink quite a lot of current, and it may not it's odd. There's a coupling capacitor, which is mainly for this PAS18A, a little microcontroller. Uh, I did look that up online to see if I could find it. There was an 8-pin version with the same number for red, green, blue, white. It's basically a custom marking for a microcontroller programmed for RGB LED with infrared receivers. There's the infrared receiver there with its 100 ohm uh, isolating resistor down to this uh, capacitor here. That just basically provides a bit of filtering from the line, because keep in mind it's going to be dimming these LEDs, there's going to be quite high current modulation, so this resistor just provides a slight decoupling for the infrared receiver, because it has its own need for um, accurate detection of low-level signals. Its signal output goes to the microcontroller, and then it controls the LEDs. That is it. So, it's an interesting device, but I get the feeling a lot of these will be used and then thrown away because the batteries aren't going to last a huge length of time. Maybe one or two evenings of use before it gets super dim. But having said that, the this little module is useful in its own right. And also, as mentioned earlier on, this uh, inflatable ball does have this port inside, which you could actually put your own higher power light source into to make a brighter bulb. One thing I didn't really noticed before. There's a bit of string supplied with it, which I've misplaced. And I thought that was just purely so you could pull it back off the water when you'd finished with it floating there. But they say it can be used in the water, can be used on land, or can be suspended by the string. So you can tie it into a tree and basically have a floating, glowing ball, which is quite a nice idea. But that's it. It's more or less what you'd expect, a few manufacturing issues. But other than that, a very interesting device.